Hey, we're rolling. We got a, we got a new product. We're going to show you several different videos to, to keep you excited all day and night. This is the Fish Skull Articulated Shank. And here's what this little delightful thing looks like. It's open loop at the back end. Closed loop that is offset 90 degrees at the front. This is where you tie your fish line to, your string. Uh, remember the Waddington shanks and how we used to play with those tying steelhead flies? Well, we, we can still do that when we can get our Waddington shanks, but this is another alternative. And uh, uh, Jeff Hickman ties a lot of flies on wire and uses a stinger hook attached. This is, uh, he gets his shafts in circles this big, you know, we don't get those. This is a nice alternative for the rest of us human beings. Come in three sizes, uh, probably 25, 35, and 55. Just imagine a longer shank over here. This is 35. Now, you look on the back of each handy package, it shows, uh, I don't know that these were developed specifically for salmon or steelhead anglers with our intruder style flies. Uh, these illustrations show just kind of putting hooks directly in the open wire and then, then securing the open wire shut. I have not played around with that yet. I have worked on using these uh, with a stinger. Um, so, so let me show you how, to, how I would secure a stinger hook to this. Um, so you, you'll see they fit nicely in the vise and uh, I like to do this with um, the upper end um, kind of free as opposed to putting the whole thing in and that, that, that can kind of spring it apart. So I'm going to have it in about like that. And this is going to happen to be a stinger tied on with a fire line, but uh, I usually use um, Maxima Chameleon section about this long, doubled. I'll loop it over my stinger hook. This is a size 2 Gamma Gatsu octopus. So one of the fun things here we have to work with is sometimes your thread will cut. Ack! Sometimes your fly tying thread will cut right when you get to that part there. So be a little bit cautious because when our thread cuts, sometimes it can send us screaming from the room. Now you see this, this has an upward bend in it. And what I've found helps the most. I like to have a shank uh, or, or a, a stinger it's about the same length as this 35 millimeter shank. So I just measure it that way. And then I open it up. And I'm going to lay this, I'm going to tie in this side alongside that loop of wire. Not on top. If it was a straight piece of wire, I'd do it on top. But I find because this, this, uh, this wire has that upward loop, I, I can't always control the hook to, where I, to ride the way I want it to. But if I tie it on the, in on the side, it seems to work very nicely. So I get one side on, and I'll turn it over. And I'll put the other side on. And if you're using different kinds of devices, Many, many, many of the vices these days allow you to, uh, the Renzettis, the Dynakings, allow you to rotate that position. So when I get to this point, I want to give a little bit of a tug on that to make sure I have the slack. And that pull just a little bit, which is great. And that takes the slack. Out. I'm going to move my thread forward without allowing it to cut on that edge. Now, I could double it back right now, but what I'm going to do is I cut one edge off. 
bring that through. Wrap all the way forward. This isn't going anywhere, folks. Now, this would be a place, um, standard head cement works great here. If, if you are insecure about uh, material slippage, you could use super glue, but you don't need to. So here is, and I'm going to tie this off, a pre-prepared stinger on a fish skull articulated shank. And you can see how that that it could be leader material, it could be critter wire, uh, bite, bite wire, or fire line. It comes down both sides and it lays nice and straight. And it's, it's, uh, the eye is perpendicular to that loop. And this is going to ride very nicely in the water.